Here we are taking a look at the one dimensional spring element in finite elements analysis. Often this is the very first element type that we take a look at when we learn about finite elements analysis. So let's go ahead and get started. We have first the spring force displacement relationship, which is how does the displacement of a spring, that's the U that we have here, how does it relate to the force that's applied and typically we make the assumption that there's a linear relationship and the slope of that line the slope of that linear relationship is the spring stiffness so we should be used to this equation where the force is equal to the stiffness of the spring multiplied by the displacement of the spring okay so note the linearity this is an important finite element analysis concept because it is used frequently So now we have that same force displacement relationship in finite elements analysis. Let's go ahead and take a look at our spring element. We have the spring itself that connects nodes one and node two. We have the force at node one. We have the force at node two. We have the displacement at node one. We have the displacement at node two. And that is our spring stiffness relationship between the force and the displacement and look what I did there all I did was I said hey you know the force there at node 2 is going to be equal to the stiffness of that spring multiplied by the difference in displacements between node nodes 2 and 3 or pardon me nodes 2 and 1 similarly I can see that the force at node 1 is equal to the spring stiffness multiplied by the difference in displacements between node 1 and node 2. Now why can I say that? Well I can say that because if we look here at the first equation if F2 would be positive if this spring is in tension and so if that spring is in tension U2 would be greater than U1 and that would give us a positive force at F2. Now conversely at node 1 F1 would be positive if the spring is in compression and sure enough if U1 is bigger than U2 F1 would be positive indicating compression okay so let's go ahead and move on to the next part if we agree with those equations these two equations that we have here the next step is we just go ahead and take those and put this into matrix form so there's our spring element again nodes one node two there's our forces our displacements and we're going to write our equations that we had from the previous slide and all we're going to do is just put this into a matrix form where each of these rows corresponds to one of those equations so there's our displacements node one and node two there's our first equation and there's our second equation and so now we have the stiffness matrix for a one-dimensional spring element in this case we just decided to bring the stiffness k out in front and we have the replaced inside with instead of k having ones in there and if you like you can go ahead and border this very important matrix equation <laughs> that's our stiffness matrix for a one-dimensional spring element Let's go ahead and conclude this video with a few reflective questions. The first reflective question we have is, where are forces always applied in finite element analysis? Some possible answers are nodes, elements, geometry, things like that. So where are the forces always applied? And where are the displacements always measured? Next question is, the stiffness matrix relates nodal blank to nodal blank. And then we have the final question is, in a static analysis, does the force F1 equal the negative force F at node 2? And follow-on question is, does the displacement 
at node 1, is that necessarily equal and opposite to the displacement at node 2? So that concludes the reflective questions for this presentation on the one-dimensional spring element in finite element analysis.